Happy birthday, church. Today we celebrate the birth of the Christian church on Pentecost, and it's great to see all your red and yellow and orange out there. Thanks for getting into the spirit. We invite you to join in singing from our black songbook, Spirit, Spirit of Gentleness, number 2120. I invite you to rise as you're able to, to sing. Welcome everyone, members and guests and visitors, to Pentecost Sunday at First United Methodist Church. We appreciate the work of the worship committee throughout the year, and particularly today, for the 
liturgical art that they have provided to us to make our special day more special today, so thank you. We ask everyone to sign in on the attendance pads with your name and address and phone number and email, if you will, so that we might stay in contact with you. Vacation Bible School starts on Tuesday, a big week in the life of our church. Last minute registrations are being accepted today. We appreciate all the contributions of supplies and the hours of service that so many people are giving to make this event happen well. And on Friday evening at 5.30 at Stony Point, there will be a closing celebration. So come over if you can and help uh, commemorate the week and learn about what's been happening at VBS this week. The crosses on display in the narthex are made from tiles from mosaics at the Angelus Center. If you'd like to make a donation for a cross, please see a member of the Worship Commission. On August 3rd, we will host Mission U, a conference featuring three classes on spiritual growth and current issues. Our very own Mary Nabu is the dean of this event, which is open to both men and women. Registration deadline is July 3rd, and more information is available in the uh, bulletin. If you try to reach the church office by phone right now, don't. Our phone system is down. We're waiting for a part, and we're trying to uh, nurture this aging phone system back to life at least for a bit until we can uh, move forward with perhaps more modern technology. Uh, Pastor Lori's phone number is in the directory if you should need to reach her in the next day or two on any urgent item. Please attend to the other announcements in the bulletin concerning activities in the life of our church. So let's move now to our worship and our call to worship, which is on the screen above. Surprising God, as bright as the shining sun, you spark us with joy. Surprising God, dazzling sunsets and leaping dolphins, Fresh breezes and second chances. Surprising, Surprising God. <laughs> and on this Pentecost Sunday, a special affirmation of faith, which we can share in unison again on the screen. We believe in God, Creator, Son, and ever present Spirit. We believe God gave birth to the church with the gift of the Holy Spirit stirring the disciples and us to tell the good news, heal the sick, feed the hungry, care for the poor, welcome the stranger, and be a community of forgiveness and joy. We believe the Spirit is still moving, still acting, still turning the worship upside down with love. We believe the Spirit gives us different gifts to use, all for building up the church and showing the world a community of compassion and wisdom. We renew our commitment to be Christ's church, spirit-filled and ignited by faith and passion. Amen.
On this special day, we have the opportunity of welcoming new members into the life of the congregation, so I invite those who are joining with us to come forward now so that we might welcome you and introduce you. I will say that at the next service at 11 o'clock, just kind of stand, stand here and we'll face the... the folks out here. At the next service at Stony Point, five of our youth will be confirmed and they've made a video of their face statement, so we're going to see that next after we, uh, we welcome these folks. So let me introduce them to you. Ann Devaney has moved to Santa Rosa two years ago from North Carolina. She lives here with her son and Anne enjoys crafting, especially felting and knit, knitting. Sherry Johnson is transferring from First United Methodist Church in Reno, where Pastor Chris Marshall has been her pastor. <clears throat> Sherry worked in Sparks for the Make-A-Wish Foundation for 25 years, a, a magical uh, opportunity that she had to transform lives. Del Raby is a longtime Boy Scouter. One of his pins there is his 80-year pin as a Boy Scout. He served as an executive for the Boy Scouts of America for 32 years for his career and is also a member of Rotary. Bob Rivers is known to many of you, a high school teacher at Santa Rosa High here for 30-some years and then went on to various other places and substitute taught. Unfortunately, Bob lost his home in paradise last uh, year to the fire, so he moved back to Santa Rosa where one of his daughters lives and then Sarita and Sky Gray. Sarita is a native of Guatemala. She is uh, 16, and she's a junior at Maria Carrillo High School. She's in the midst of training to be a lifeguard this summer and beyond, and has some, some great plans this summer, including going to her homeland of Guatemala. And her mom is Sky, who has a long United Methodist background, uh, hails originally from Virginia, the East Coast area. She is the director of the Valley of the Moon Children's Home. So we have a, a, a wide variety of folks who bring uh, lots of faith and experience to our congregation, and we're, we're glad to receive you. I want to share uh, the, the liturgy, and I invite you all, since this is the birth of the church, it's good, good for us to renew our faith and commitment today to answer the questions as we go through them. So brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We're given new birth through water and the Holy Spirit. All of this is God's gift offered to us without price. Through confirmation and reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant that was declared at our baptism. We acknowledge what God is doing for us and we affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. New life in Christ is a life of faith which makes itself known by turning from sin and turning toward godliness. And so on behalf of the church, I ask you these historic questions. Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression 
in whatever forms they present themselves. And so we say, I do. I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior? Put your whole trust in his grace in union with the church, which Christ is open to people of all ages, nations, and races. I do. According to the grace given you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? I will this time. As members of Christ's universal church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in its power, in your power, to strengthen its ministries? I will. And as members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your witness, and your service? I will. Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and to your care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. And I invite you to welcome them with the response that hopefully is on the screen. Yes. <laughs> Together we give thanks for all that God has already given you and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in this body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. We welcome you and we have uh, certificates to mark this day. And we're grateful for your new presence among us. And we welcome you into the, the life and fellowship of, of this congregation in all its dimensions. Dale and Bob and Sarita and Skye. Got those Thank backwards. You. There you go. Those are for you too. So welcome. Thank you. We look forward to growing in the church with you. And let us uh, view the video. It's difficult to define exactly how its expression should appear. Love of family, of strangers, love of church, state, self, or creed? Or is there a deeper, stranger, and more cosmic love we should follow? These are not questions to which we have the answers. As I enter into this complex community of united individuals, I expect to receive just that, community. Just in case you didn't hear their names at the beginning, that from our church are Kyle Durr, Chase Dunbar, Ella Hill, and Keenan and Landon McAllister. I invite you to stand as you are comfortable and sing As a Fire is Meant for Burning. It's number 2237 in our songbook.
Good morning. I'm going to be reading from Acts 2, 1 through 21, the new revised standard version. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all gathered in one place. Suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them this ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one of them heard speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these are speaking? And how is that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Phrygia, and Palmyra, Egypt, and the rest of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jew and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages as we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. And all were amazed and perplexed saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the 11, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, they are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slave, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. I will show portents of the heavens, and signs up on the earth below, and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then to everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let us pray. George Frederick Handel. His life was marked by debt and despair, by loss and illness. A cerebral hemorrhage left him paralyzed on one side, and for four years he couldn't walk, much less write. Then, at age 60, after attempt, his new work was far more ambitious than anything he had ever attempted. It was a more grandiose production with all the lyrics taken straight from scripture. At his lowest point, he took his biggest risk. What emerged, many considered the greatest oratorio ever written, Handel's Messiah. Millions of people have heard the inspiring oratorio and had their hearts filled by the lyrics declaring God is King of Kings and Lord of Lords ending with that marvelous hallelujah chorus that could have been sung straight from heaven. God's specialty is bringing surprising results from lost causes. We see evidence of this characteristic of God in other stories from Scripture. Abraham and Sarah gave up hoping for a child long into old age when suddenly... God made a promise and delivered Isaac. Peter fished all night without a catch before Jesus told him to cast his net on the other side of the boat where they caught so many fish that they couldn't even haul in the net. A woman had suffered from bleeding for 12 years. She walked alone in a crowd feeling very invisible. And suddenly she saw Jesus. And she reached out and she touched the hem of his garment and his healing power poured through her. 
The body of the Savior of the world was placed in a tomb and sealed with a stone. Until the third day brought a surprise like the world had never seen. Why are we surprised when God continues to show up and enter into circumstances that we feel are stacked against us? Being astonished again and again by God's intervention is a little like having friends who throw you a surprise party every year after year on your birthday. (laughs) And yet you're still caught off guard in shock. When you open the door, they turn on the lights and they all shout, surprise! A different kind of surprise party was in store for Jesus' followers. Fifty days after Easter, they were gathered together in Jerusalem. Jesus had told them to wait for the promised Holy Spirit to come, but they had no idea how the Spirit would manifest itself. They had been on a roller coaster of emotions from Jesus' crucifixion and death, and then his sudden unexpected resurrection. He was among them again for 40 days in ministry, and 10 days ago, prior to Pentecost, he had ascended into heaven. The disciples are exhausted emotionally. They're frazzled and uncertain of what will come next. They may just be hoping that the Spirit will come and calm things down, bring some order, and a carefully laid plan for next steps. Think again. The Holy Spirit shows up in a most dramatic way, in a way that Hollywood producers would love. It's a multimedia experience with flashing tongues of flame, a rush of a mighty wind, and the sudden ability to speak in other languages. The gathering becomes noisy, chaotic, confusing, and wondrous. To behold. On Pentecost, we see that the Spirit works through people from different backgrounds with diverse perspectives, various languages, and different points of view. Although the Spirit does not impose uniformity, nor is it always experienced in the same way, the Holy Spirit is the force of unity in the midst of such great diversity. The Spirit gives birth to what we know as the church, those faltering, stumbling disciples of Jesus, kind of like us, who seek the promised guidance of the Holy Spirit. The United Methodist Church seems to be having a Pentecost experience of sorts. Tongues are burning with passionate, sometimes angry, sometimes loving, Often defiant words, powerful winds are breaking open communities of faith, scattering some and emboldening others to ride the winds of change into the future. A cacophony of voices is sounding, voices from a variety of cultures and stations in a multitude of languages. And like those early Christians... God's people hear and speak about God's mighty acts of power. Bishop Sue Halpert Johnson has described this period in the life of the church as one of holy incubation. We recognize that the United Methodist Church, as it has previously existed, is ending. But we are experiencing the power of the Holy Spirit in many ways, God is yet at work, breathing resurrection power into the tomb and into all of creation. We grieve for the church, but not as those without faith. For we expect God to bring resurrection to our church in ways that we cannot now fully see or comprehend. Remember, God's specialty is bringing surprising results to lost causes. The late author Phyllis Tickle had a thesis that significant changes take place every 500 years in the church. 
That pattern actually began 500 years before Christ, when the Babylonian exile prompted great changes in Jewish theology. Then, of course, in the first century came Jesus of Nazareth, starting a new movement called Christianity. The 5th and 6th centuries saw the consolidation of the church under Pope Gregory the Great. The great schism between the Eastern and Western churches took place in the 11th century and the Protestant Reformation in the 16th century. From this historical trend, Tickle proposed that in the 21st century, we today are poised for another great transformation of the church. Phyllis Tickle called this 500-year phenomenon of change the church's 500-year rummage sale. <laughs> the current state of the church does feel like we're in a significant transition, having left what has always been, having left the good old days, having left the way we always done church. And moving on, but not quite seeing where we're going. We're challenged to figure out what to throw out and what to keep. It's chaotic to sort through old understandings, to discern whether they are faithful to God's will as we understand it through scripture, tradition, reason, and experience. It's humbling to be still enough to set aside our own opinions, thoughts, and even prejudices, to be open to fresh revelations of the Holy Spirit. It's a painful process to let go of that which has long been cherished in order to grasp that which is new and relevant today. But lest we fear we remember that God's specialty is bringing surprising results from lost causes. God works not only on a large scale, but also in individual lives. In our readings from the book of Acts in recent weeks, we've seen how the disciples of Jesus claim their new status as leaders in Jesus' movement. Once they receive the Holy Spirit, they are different people, they are bolder, more able to minister with power from above. They're less afraid of human retribution, more unified and certain of their purpose to spread the gospel. There are undoubtedly seasons when we feel like candle felt, overcome with hopelessness and despair. We have our personal pains and concerns we worry about the state of our nation and our world and about the fragile condition of God's creation. Sometimes we need to get to the point of admitting our powerlessness over those things that we cannot control before we can fully open our hearts to the astonishing power of God in our midst. When we breathe deep, Exhaling our fear, inhaling God's presence. Exhaling despair, inhaling hope. Exhaling frustration, inhaling faith. We remember that God loves to bring new life where all seems lost and hopeless. As the church at large and as we as individuals move through an uncertain season, let's remember that God specializes in bringing surprising results from lost causes. It may be a very slow process, but in faith, we trust that God is doing something lively in the world. For underneath all the chaos, the Holy Spirit is at work in powerful ways to give birth to new life. By the power of the Holy Spirit, a transformation is taking place, the end result of which we cannot yet see. But we can trust that as on that first Pentecost, 
the people of God will be amazed and astonished at the surprising, wondrous acts of God that bring new life, even out of lost causes. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to prepare for our prayer time by singing Spirit of the Living God. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. As you first breathed life into us, we yearn for a fresh outpouring of your life within. Fill us with new enthusiasm for the life you have given us to enjoy and to treasure. Breathe your divine wisdom into us that we might follow your guidance and live into your way and your truth. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come alongside our children, youth, and young adults. Inspire their learning and grant them a sense of purpose for their lives. Protect them from harm and kindle in them hope for the future. Shower your guiding presence upon our confirmands and all followers of Christ, that we might walk in his footsteps. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come alongside those in need of encouragement and affirmation. Shine your light of love into hearts overcome by despair. Implant your loving patience within those who care for loved ones. Walk with those living in the midst of uncertainty. Come, Holy Spirit, come alongside our loved ones living with health conditions. We pray for Janet, Dawn, Emily, Gerald, Bob, Margie, Jasmine, John, George, Sarah, Alfred, Mark, Shirley, B, and others whom we name in our hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, come alongside those who weep for loved ones. We pray for the soulless, for people of communities who, where innocent lives have been tragically taken. Offer comfort to first responders and medical teams who minister to victims. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Enliven your people, arousing us out of complacency and inaction. Move us toward actions that secure the health and well-being of all your people. Guide those charged with leadership that we might care for the needs and safety of all. Come, Holy Spirit, come afresh to your church and all disciples of Jesus. Make us bold to live and speak Christ's teachings, even when they are unpopular. We lift our name, our prayers in the name of Christ, uniting our voices with his together praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thanks be to God for Colleen, who helps us feel the spirit. Let us pray. Surprising God, we are grateful that your involvement with the disciples of Jesus did not stop at the cross or at the tomb, but that you poured out your Holy Spirit on your church that first Pentecost and have done so every day since. As we bring our tithes and offerings to you this day, ignite us with faith and passion once again. 
Help us to open the sails of our lives to the mighty movement of your spirit that it might send us from this place into a hurting and disconnected world. Fill us with your power. In Christ we pray. Amen. At the conclusion of our service, we invite you to join us in Fellowship Hall for coffee and conversation and donuts. And now, will you stand as you are comfortable and sing number 500 in the red hymnal, Spirit of the Living God. As you go forth, remember that God specializes in bringing surprising results out of lost causes. May the surprising presence of God delight you. May the companionship of Jesus uplift you. May the healing, guiding presence of the Spirit be with you, this day and always. Amen.